Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. A gigantic factory, but unlike other factories, oil rigs are located in the middle of the ocean, hundreds of miles from shore. Oil rigs, also known as oil production platforms, are where workers extract and process petroleum and natural gas that lie in rock formations beneath the seabed. These offshore plants are supported by massive steel or concrete legs anchored to the seabed, although some are floating platforms. Production sites vary from shallow to deep, but generally, the deepest are designed with the capability to operate in over 9,000 feet of depth. Oil rigs are self-sufficient. They generate their own electricity and purify their own water. Each day, drillers operate the rig to produce thousands of barrels of petroleum products. The oil is then exported to shore via a network of hydrocarbon pipelines or oil tankers. In the middle of the hectic and harsh conditions, the platforms provide workers with dedicated recreational spaces. From cinema, billiards and video games to musical instruments, every crew member can choose their genre and nurture their talents during off-duty hours. Additionally, the crew recharges their energy with nourishing meals and good discussions around the table. The food is prepared on board and served fresh by specialized cooks. Crispy pork, rice, eggs, vegetables, all the necessary ingredients for the weekly schedule are available. The crew on oil rigs often work 21 days, followed by 21 days off or two weeks followed by three weeks off, depending on company policy. This rotation helps manage the physical and mental strain of working in such an isolated and challenging environment. Going to work on oil rigs is as special as working on them. The crew arrives at work by helicopter or supply ships. The transportation mode depends on the distance from the shore. Helicopters are preferred for relatively close distances, while supply ships are more suitable for farther sites. Upon arrival, Newcomers undergo safety briefings and induction to familiarize themselves with the rig layout. They will work and live here until the next crew rotation time comes. A typical workday on an oil rig is long, usually comprising 12-hour shifts, which can be either day or night shifts. Crew members work seven days a week during their rotation period, with little distinction between weekdays and weekends. Every shift begins with a briefing meeting, during which the incoming crew is updated on the rig status, any production issues, and safety protocols. These meetings are crucial for ensuring everyone is aware of their tasks and any potential hazards. Once briefed, crew members head to their respective stations.
the crew monitors drilling activities in the control room. From these advanced systems, they have absolute control over both topside facilities and subsea wells. They can open and close the valves remotely to control the amount of extracted oil. They are also responsible for multiple other indicators. If anything goes wrong in one of them, it might affect the whole system. Fortunately, production engineers are there to troubleshoot any potential issues. Their job goes beyond corrective solutions to preventative maintenance. Sometimes, unexpected events might arise, pushing the limits of engineers to come up with immediate and creative solutions. Oil rigs are extremely complex in their engineering, as they must endure the unforgiving environment of offshore conditions. The design process of these platforms can be even longer than the construction itself. The evolving business landscape, especially the new regulations regarding sustainability, poses many challenges for oil rig builders. Shell's Appomattox design, for instance, took four years. Four years of intense engineering and collaboration with a team of scientists to identify solutions that would guarantee a lifespan of 40 years and minimal impact on marine life. Appomattox was designed to be located in deep water, about 7,400 feet deep. Design challenges included green energy generation, lower water consumption, pipe insulation, and chemical storage tanks. Once the design was finalized, heavy construction work began. In Samsung Heavy Industries' Koje Shipyard, hundreds of workers worked 12-hour days to construct the whole of the world's largest floating production system. The hull comprises four giant columns, each about 16 stories high. Construction began with the fabrication and assembly of large sections. These structures were then lifted with heavy lift cranes and perfectly stacked on each other. After two years of hard work, the 368-foot hull was ready to accommodate the four topside modules. The hull was transported over 30,000 kilometers around the globe, all the way from South Korea to the Gulf of Mexico, where the integration was planned to take place. In the meantime, the construction and installation of subsea infrastructure was underway. In Ingleside, Texas, the four primary topside modules were being fabricated. The oil and gas processing plant the power plant, the utilities, and the living quarters. Finally, the topside modules were lifted 60 feet in the air and placed on the hull. Slowly, the project transformed from sections into a complete oil platform. The platform was then transported to the drilling site. All that was left was to connect it to the oil field beneath the seabed. It is a critical moment, which involves precisely placing the subsea tree on top of the well. The final task is the riser transfer, which consists of connecting the pipeline that will bring oil up to the Appomattox. It is now a fully operational oil rig with the capacity of producing 175,000 barrels a day.
After years of drilling, extraction, and processing, oil rigs are decommissioned. This process involves safely dismantling and disposing of the structure once it has reached the end of its operational life, typically around 20 to 40 years, though sometimes sooner. For instance, this gas platform has to be decommissioned after only 11 years. After plugging and abandoning the well bores, the team of experts prepared the topside for decommissioning. Now, the time has come to dismantle the platform and remove it from the water. Skilled cutters carefully cut the supporting structure according to the pre-designed dismantling plan. Adhering to this plan is essential, as any changes might destabilize the rig putting both crew life and the environment at risk. Once the top side is separated from the jacket, a massive crane lifts and places it on a heavy lift vessel. It's time to remove the jacket now. Jackets or legs of the rig are often cut into sections using explosives or cutting tools. The structure is then lifted and transported alongside the topsides. On shore, the structures are cleaned to remove any residual hydrocarbons and other hazardous materials. The metals and other materials are then recycled, often finding new life in construction, manufacturing, or other industries. Another recycling technique for oil rigs is repurposing them as artificial reefs. Known as rigs to reefs, this innovative approach involves sinking retired oil production platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. The first R2R project involved towing a decommissioned rig to a predetermined site and deliberately sinking it. The structure quickly became colonized by marine life, creating a rich and diverse ecosystem. Actually, rigs to reefs enhances biodiversity by providing hard surfaces for coral and other organisms to attach to. Additionally, it offers shelter and breeding grounds for fish and other marine creatures and supports local fisheries by creating new habitats. It is a sustainable practice that also allows saving millions of dollars from full removal and recycling, not to mention the environmental impact associated with traditional disposal methods. Apart from oil rigs, old ships are also repurposed as artificial reefs off the Gulf of Mexico. The problem with this area is that the seabed is composed of mud and sand with no hard surface for marine life to attach to. This means only a few fish can live there. However, this place is transforming into a thriving underwater ecosystem by sinking rigs and ships. In 2019, the Kraken, a decommissioned cargo ship, became the largest ship to be reefed off the Texas coast. The Kraken was sunk using a controlled flood. Four large holes were cut on each side of the ship's stern to allow water in. After a few hours, a dramatic scene was painted in the Gulf of Mexico. The ship disappeared from the surface. At a depth of 140 feet, the Kraken was level on the seabed. After only seven months, 
the kraken was coated with marine species, including red snappers and mackerel scad. This way, these rigs and ships will continue to be productive even after retirement. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.